questions to those on the YouTube chat box, please let us know when you can hear us. Oh. Okay. There is the agenda. As usual, we'll get started with uh, testnet and release updates. Um, V09.0 is out. I think that's what we were discussing in the last call. Uh, came out about a week and a half ago. Um, I know a number of you are working towards getting that uh, cleaned up and ready to go. Um, and we have a few more PRs that are going to be released as 09 releases. Um, that I'm very, very actively working on getting done um, and expect to release this weekend. Um, there are an additional cleanup of pulling the custody bits out of attestations um, and a few fork choice fixes um, that are kind of post-audit fixes. Uh, Bruya, a Japanese researcher, um, has been doing some work and the past few months on ETH research has found a couple of attacks on FFG plus Ghost and a couple of pretty simple fixes. So those are going to be integrated. Um, again, I'm working on getting these out as soon as possible because I know that's really the delaying component on moving towards uh, larger test nets. Um, I have a on our agenda today a, a, a discussion point for test nets again. Um, I expect there's some movement on the uh, more localized test nets and smaller client test nets, but on larger orchestrated ones, we got to get these. Uh, um, I think we really need to get these releases out before we move there. Um, I want to make a clarification on uh, the the tests. So we did have a number of these like ad hoc interop test cases that we found um, debugging multi client test nets on the wire. Um, these were for 083, and I think some of you had integrated them into your test net, testing flows. We have since then built out handwritten tests that hit these test cases. So if you're passing um, 084 and if you're passing 09, you are passing those tests. So you don't need to integrate those into your client anymore. Um, but we will likely run into those again and maybe do the same thing. Um, any other testing updates? Proto, do you have any updates on Muskoka? So Muskoka itself is up. The website is live. The problem is that we now need worker nodes or these clients to run on the site and consume these inputs. And I'm in the process of deploying the Go specification to run these transitions. And then next up, by spec, maybe NCOI. I know NCOI is working well and um, was looking nice during intro, so I'll try and deploy that as well. Cool. Um, and that that end up, correct me if I'm wrong. That might serve the purpose of kind of cataloging some of these um, tests, like broken cases. All right. So the main goal of Muskoka is to run um, the same transition on all these different clients and make it as accessible as possible uh, for someone to try and run their test case on all the different clients without like downloading the clients, installing, running it themselves. And then we publish the results and so it can track what's happening and if there is any case where the results are different. Yeah, so for example, if. I'm running some interop test cases against Nimbus and we have a consensus error. I can post that to Muskoka and see how everyone else uh, either agrees or disagrees with our results. Yeah. Everyone cool. is in consensus with Nimbus. That <laughs> uh, I don't know if that's always always the truth, mommy. But uh Hope maybe after interop, y'all clean some things up. Um, cool. So we'll move on to any other testing updates. No, I think this is it. All right. Great. Thank you.
Uh, let's move on to client updates. And since we're already talking, how about Nimbus? Okay. So what I said about uh, consensus with Nimbus is actually not true because uh, this week we are moving from 0.8.3 to 0.9.0. So depending on the commit that you use, um, the genesis state might change uh, due to the change in uh, the beacon state. So uh, Nimbus is not in consensus with Nimbus. Uh, otherwise, uh, we updated all docs. So we have now build instruction for uh, building Nimbus on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, for the public testnet, um, Zari uh, created a new repo on the if2 clients uh, common repository for everyone. I, I put the link in uh, the chat and guidelines on, uh, I mean, everyone can um, uh, add uh, his own questions or change them, uh, just use common sense on how to uh, share you know, the metadata needed uh, by your client and if another client wants to connect to it. And regarding public testnet, um, so we are setting up the infrastructures so that we have monitoring, uh, public monitoring for a graph and a dashboard uh, over the next weeks. Otherwise, so like I said, uh, on the core part of the client, we are uh, updating uh, the 20.9.0 and passing tests one by one. That also means that we implement both specs 0.8.3 and 0.9.0 at the same time. Uh, and uh, you shouldn't rely on uh, all uh, state uh, during the migration because sometimes it will be 0 0.8.3 that you get serialized or 0 0.9.0. Regarding testing, uh, over the past uh, two weeks, we struggled with timeouts in OCI. Um, so uh, we solved that uh, yesterday. We had uh, caching issues. Uh, of uh, RocksDB, and we also moved away from AppVeyor to uh, Azure Pipelines uh, for uh, the Windows testing. And we also have now uh, testing on ARM devices uh, of all of the commits. And lastly, we moved completely to tarballs. Uh, we used caching for uh, the LFS EF files in, uh, in the past, but uh, now even if someone uh, does a git clone LFS something, it will not use for sure the LFS quota uh, of uh, the foundation. Um, we finished also uh, I running out uh, the bugs and migrating to NIM 1.0, uh, which was released last September. And uh, on the lp2p front, uh, we had some updates on PubSub and gossip sub implementation and now uh, we are starting to uh, we will start to integrate uh, the native lip p2p uh, into a code base and replace the go lip p2p daemon cool um on those the testnet standard under the ETH, ETH PM, is there a place for specifying the version uh, that the testnet is targeting uh, the spec version uh, I let Zari reply because he's uh, the one who found right. about everything. Well, my, my vision so far is that uh, each uh, testnet exists in a subfolder, and this subfolder has a readme file. Mm -hmm. And within this readme file, you can describe any peculiar things, like uh, which spec you are targeting, whether you do the naive uh, attestation aggregation, and so on. OK, that's reasonable. Thanks. OK, how about Lodestar? Uh, yeah, so past few weeks, uh, we finished pulling out our state transition into a separate package. Uh, this is going to help uh, just with I don't know, people at a hackathon wanting to use a state transition or you know, being able to use it independently of Lodestar. Um, we are almost done with a more robust initial syncing. Um, we're in the process of moving from 8, 0 0.8 in spec to 0 0.9, pretty close to finishing on that. Um, we are refactoring our gossip sub uh, because uh, JS libp2p 
is going through a very large refactor from like an older style of JavaScript using callbacks to the newer style using async await and promises. And so uh, someone from the libp2p team is helping us with that migration and hope that that can be merged soon. And I believe that's it for now. Cool, thanks. Um, and yeah, if y'all didn't see, there's a number of ETH2 related bounties at ETH Waterloo coming up. Um, and if you have any ideas for these, I think we're gonna run them generally at the ETH Global Hackathons. If you have any ideas for uh, little experiments or tools or things you think that would be good targets, uh, please let me know and I can get them on the list. Great, how about parody? Uh, so for 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 us for party we finished all the we fixed all the the interop uh, issue we had since last time so now it should uh, everything should work uh, uh, and uh, we also finished upgrading our beacon implementation to uh, zero point nine and we just passed all the reference tests today so that's for us great thanks Ray. Trinity. Hey everyone. Uh, let's see. So we have a lot of exciting stuff in PRs that's really just waiting to be merged. Uh, that's the state transition updates to 09 uh, and the network updates from 084. We have a lot of good work on node stability and pilot P2P stability. So those things just work better. Uh, we had a really crazy performance improvement in PySS said. So moving basically to have uh, backing persistent data structures so we don't have to like do all the crazy copying we were doing. It had something like several orders of magnitude increase performance, so that was pretty awesome. Uh, and then some work on separating out our validator client as a distinct binary. And very much looking forward to all these public test nets happening as soon as possible. Great, thank you. Thanks, Alex. Lighthouse. Hey everyone. Um, same as everybody else is that we're working towards um, doing public test nets. So in that regard, we've been focusing on our uh, F1 connectivity, um, which has kind of helped us clear up some of the issues with F1 voting spec. Um, we're making changes to our CLI to like make it more ergonomic so that it's easy to use when, when joining some of these test nets. Uh, we've been ramping up a bit of our testing as well and most of the aspects um, of Lighthouse for going for actually getting public use. Uh, what else have we done? We've implemented um, encryption for BLS keys. So we have like a key store for our validator keys. Uh, we're passing the test vectors for 0.9.0, uh, but we still need to kind of finish the update, which we'll probably be doing next week, uh, early next week. Uh, we've also been implementing uh, slashing protection. Uh, we have actually a PR for slashing protection for the validator client. Um, and we're looking to use SQLite for the database inside that. Um, I think that's mainly the, the main stuff from us. Thanks. Thanks, Age. And slashing protection there is ensuring that the validator doesn't get slashed, not uh, policing other validators, right? That's correct, yeah. Got it. Cool. Prismatic. Oh, hey guys, and um, it's pretty much the same update as everyone else. Um, we fixed a few RPC related bugs after users have been reporting them, so which is nice that today we have users uh, querying our testnet information. And uh, our single client testnet is currently done right now since we're aligning um, version 0.9 to our full base. So uh, we finished uh, version 09 a few days ago, and then we're passing all the spec tests uh, for both state transition and SSC. So those look good so far. And we're planning to relaunch our testnet by the end of the week. And in the process, we're also working on aggregation, but that's not really testnet blocking. We can roll in the new aggregations back as a feature. And um, and we're also working on slashing on both uh, protection and then, and then the policing front. And yeah, I think that's mainly it. Great, thanks, Terrence. Artemis. Yo, that's me. Uh, so 
for something a little different. We've got some team changes. We're moving Artemis internally from incubation to the product side of Pegasus. So it'll still be some familiar faces, but there are one or two new ones. So I'd like to introduce uh, Meredith, who's on the call. Um, she did a lot of the heavy lifting on our Ethereum One client, and we're very uh, glad to have her joining the Artemis team. Uh, as far as development work, work goes, similar to um, everyone else, uh, this sprint is about updating to 0 0.9. Um, we're completing Discovery v5 integration. We're working on the REST um, management API and working on syncing. And the goal is to be able to uh, hook up as soon as possible to some of these uh, test nets that you all are building. That's it from me. Thanks, Ben. Welcome, Meredith. Um, and do we have anyone from Harmony? Again, I know there's a unification in process, but Harmony's kind of driving forward on some more researchy related components. So if anyone from Harmony would like to give an update. Yeah, here is Anton. Um, so what's about the Harmony? Uh, we, we have updated, uh, uh, updated the specification uh, to complete for choice tests. Um, uh, we we are uh, interrupting with yet for discovery v5. Uh, we are continuing on uh, P2P simulation framework, and um, so and we are continuing to merge with Atomic team. And that's it. Great, thanks, Anton. Um, did I hit everyone? I think so. Okay, let me pull my agenda. Um, next we have research updates. Um, Vitalik said he'd be about a half hour late, uh, but we can, we'll do some research updates. And if he joins us, he can give his update. Um, anyone want to get us started? Hey, I'll go. Uh, I've got a. Uh, yesterday we start had our first uh, meeting with light client friendly folks, the light client task force. Um, this isn't directly, I guess. Uh, you know, anything, nothing new was presented, but we had a great Q and A with Joel Falfoldi on the light client incentivization, uh, light client server incentivization framework that he's come up with. Uh, we have a recording online. It's an hour long, so. I'm going to see if we can get a, uh, a grant, or not a grant, a little uh, bounty together to get a transcript. Um, but it's great to just get get this this uh, knowledge out there to everybody. So if you have time, an extra hour, you can listen to it. Cool, thanks, Cameron. Justin? Yeah, so we've uh, we've made some progress on the, the BLS standardization. There's a a new hash to curve draft, which is out. Um, <clears throat> and this is the one you know, that I'm expecting we will go in production with uh, for Ethereum. Um, there's also um, kind of updated uh, test suites um, and uh, Hirumi. Um, so the, ma the maintainer of Hirumi, the, the really fast BLS uh, implementation has um, accepted uh, to, to do some work on the grant so he'll be implementing this new hash function and uh, helping out with uh, Rust integration as uh, the two first steps. Um, I mean, that's all my updates on kind of phase zero, but if we look into the future on uh, phase two, I guess, um, there's, there's been um, you know, very good progress on, on, on the, you know, the VDF project. And like one of the big milestones is this uh, RSA MPC um, and so it looks like, um, you know, the, the MPC is uh, hitting all the performance targets. So we, we're looking to um, um, you know, wrap up, well, hand over the code from Ligero that is implementing the MPC and then hand it over to um, auditors um, maybe early, early next year. Um, and then hopefully do the MPC like some, <clears throat> maybe mid, mid next year, but it, it, it all seems to be working, uh, moving uh, very well. Um, and just generally the, the 
the, the space of um, you know, groups of unknown order, the, the, the cryptography seems to be blossoming because we have these, these new constructions for snarks, uh, for accumulators, um, and there's also um, new groups of unknown order that are rumored. So beyond the RSA groups and the class groups, there's kind of a, a rumor of, a, of yet another one, uh, which has uh, some very nice properties. So um, <clears throat> yeah, this is kind of exciting stuff that's happening that will be relevant in phase two and also at the application layer. Great, thanks, Justin. Any other research updates? Uh, I have a question for Justin. Uh, Harumi, we have with the Rust integration, but I guess the base library will be in uh, C++ with C bindings as well, right? Yeah, so, <clears throat> I mean, I guess if you have a, a, a C project or a C++ project, then integration should be easy. Um, is that the question? Uh, yes, it's just to know if we will implement it in Rust or in C or C++ oh, okay. with, and yeah. will help with bindings from C to Rust, for example. Uh -huh. um, <clears throat> well, I guess this, there is a Telegram group, which I can uh, add you there. I think this is um, kind of still being uh, discussed with the, the Sigma Prime guys who are helping with that integration. More than happy to include you in the Telegram group. Uh, yes, thank you. Any other research items before we move on? Um, so maybe one thing, like we've made some uh, efforts um, over the last couple of weeks to um, unify, like also in the similar vein as was what Justin just mentioned on the different crypto stuff. Um, to like unify our bounties on that. So we now have a central entry point, challenges.ethereum.org. Um, and yeah, I mean, we're like ex expanding our programs there because we've seen like some very good work come out of it. Um, so um, it seems like those bounties are a good way of like uh, getting our cryptography and we're doing some very new cryptography here at the moment. Um, yeah, better validated. So yeah, if you have any people who are interested in that, you want to share those with like challenges.ethereum.org is now a good entry point to, um, to see all those different um, bounties that um, are yeah, there to improve the, the state of the Ethereum infrastructure. Yeah, I just dropped a link in the chat. Thanks, not good. Uh, I forget, we forgot one update I posted in the chat just now, um, but with the uh, test nets coming up, we're, I've been working on like a MetaMask plugin. Uh, if you don't know, it's like a new V2 kind of thing, a MetaMask, but anyway, it, it'll have like auto deposits and stuff like that, like built into it. So that hopefully for the getting users on, on the test nets and stuff, it'll be a bit easier and less painful. Nice. Um, on the auto-generated deposits, are you going to generate keys there and then allow them to be exported or what? Yeah, that's the idea. Um, the MetaMask lets you like derive a, a key from like the root key. Right. And then you can use that as like salt or something to then generate or entropy to like generate a new BLS key there. Nice. Yeah. That's great. On that note, does anyone have confirmation because we were kind of debating it? Um, how much overlap is there on the current ETH1 key to the uh, curve, sorry, to the e to the BLS curve? Like the, I, I think it's like 50%, right? It's not It's not 100%. That's uh, about 47, 48%. Okay, cool. So definitely not going to use it. <laughs> I keep that entropy. Yeah, have you seen, Carl released a number of, here, Carl, you can explain. Yeah, so um, I put up three EIPs, which are basically in the space of living in my own repos, but now it's EIPs, uh, 2333, uh, 2233, and 2335, um, which are BLS key derivation, key paths, and key stores. Um, so yeah, that uh, basically is, 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 is hopefully where, where, where this all goes. 
Um, if you if you want functions for mapping from entropy, um, then uh, the, you may as well use the HKDF mod R. Uh, there, um, that, 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 that should accomplish that for you nicely um, and then be compatible with everything. But uh, yeah, so I've, I've had a lot of people get in contact with me because uh, some teams are already implementing, that's cool. Um, found some bugs in my implementation and uh, some bugs all that go all the way back to the test vectors for the ETH1 key stores, which has been a little bit interesting, but uh, yeah, all good. Very good, thank you. I'll share my video. <laughs> <laughs> you're just, you're bad at Zoom, Greg. It's not my, uh, my, my strong suit. Any other research items before we move on? Great. Um, network update. Uh, I was, I think, Anton, Anton uh, from Harmony has been working on a simulator for Gospel Sub, LibPDP, PubStub. Um, but he gave us an update about that earlier. Is there anything else you wanted to let us know about that, on Anton? Actually, the work is still in progress. I'm just uh, now uh, optimizing uh, the code and see how how many nodes <coughs> can be simulated in practice. <coughs> for now, for now, it uh, looks like uh, uh, hundreds of thousands nodes can be can be easily simulated, but uh, not 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 too fast, maybe. <clears throat> but but it's possible. But uh, the work is still in progress. Cool. Thank you. Um, I think Mike was planning on joining us from Protocol Labs, but I don't see him. Right? No one from Protocol Labs is here. Okay. Um, any updates from White Block? Uh, nope, not any, nothing too big this week that I know of. Uh, we're just continuing with our adjusting our methodology for the libp2p testing based on some of the tests that we've gotten. Great, thank you. Um, any other network related things you want to discuss? Okay, um, moving on, the next item is general spec discussion. I put that there. Uh, we have the, the 09 stuff and the 091 coming. Um, any questions that came up while you're working through that? It's largely subtractive, pretty straightforward. Okay, good. Um, next up, testnet discussion. Um, my general read on the past two weeks is that people are working on 09. Uh, people are also working on uh, getting, some teams are working on getting some uh, continued uh, single client testnet stuff out there. And there's a lot of general intention to uh, experiment with some multi client behavior on. Uh, different teams, single client test sets um, in the coming approximate two weeks. Um, like I said at the beginning of the call, a more orchestrated test net um, is not something that I want to do until we have what looks like near a spec freeze with these 09 updates coming out. Um, I also posted an issue on ETH 2 p.m. yesterday um, that is just a list of tooling and things that we want for test nets um, and also the associated people that are have either mentioned that they're working on it or uh, or not. Um, I just shared that there. Please add some items to that list um, and we can figure out how to 
we'll prioritize things and also uh, bring in some external resources if needed or desired. Um, cool. So that's the, at least from my perspective, the lay land on test nets is pretty much we need another two weeks to um, do single client test net things and get these 09 updates out. Um, is there any other things, open discussion on test nets, uh, comments, thoughts on what's going on? Uh, does it make sense to put a test net configuration like with all the different parameters set in the in the specs or is it too premature could that go like with like 091 or something right we had discussed at least isolating the um, I think some of the signature domains or the, the versioning um, so that might be desirable. Um, I think at least from in terms of shard counts and things like that, the intention is generally to do minimal and then to step up to the main net. Um, do you have any, did you have any other, anything else in mind for altering the configurations for test nets? I think I saw in the chat, um, someone was talking about like changing the ETH1 follow distance. Right. This is Terrence from Prismatic. So the main one, we, we basically use the E2 spat tests um, for the minimum config. And then the other ones we change are the, are the ETH1 follow distance and then the ejection balance. And those are the two that we changed. Right. Ejection balance is uh, definitely a good one. Um, what is the follow distance on minimal right now? Or is it not? Is not specified? It's changed. It's not specified, but we change it from thousand twenty four to sixteen, which is about fifteen minutes, given right. the, given right. the current test net block time. Okay, um, I'll look into making a modified config called small test net um, that can make some of these adjustments. Hey, Danny, do you want to go over the uh, your new PR uh, with the deposit size? Yeah. Let's see. I saw that Justin had made, at least thrown up some counter arguments for discussion. Um, so long ago, the uh, number of validators to start the chain was specified as... Um, think about half a million. This was probably about a year ago. Um, and then Alexi doing some, just kind of getting the lay of land and, and doing some reading on E2, uh, was concerned about a gatekeeper attack in which a, um, someone with around a half a million ETH quickly deposits, triggers the chain to start and then prevents new deposits from being processed. Um, this was this this attack was in the context of um, there only being an amount of uh, depositors to trigger the chain start, rather than also a time. So, given that there's there's a genesis time, and given that. Uh, so that it gives other people other than an attacker a chance to make deposits if that was the case. Um, that mitigates a lot of the attack potential. Um, and also, if a gatekeeper attack happened, it would be incredibly obvious um, and an opportunity to utilize some social coordination to uh, remove an attacker from the chain, which is kind of one of those near last resort techniques in proof of stake to uh, recover. Um, so, I propose in a PR uh, 1467 to reduce the, and we, we up, in response to the, the um, gatekeeper attack, we upped the min deposits to 2 million validators, um, or no, 2 million ETH, sorry, I was speaking in validators, but I meant ETH. Um, 
to essentially reduce the chances that somebody, some whale, could execute such an attack. Um, more recently, we've discussed that maybe it makes sense to reduce uh, the amount of minimum ETH to start the chain, uh, primarily in light of this like potentially long um, and unknown lockup period. Um, it allows for if there's if there's not enough validators that are encouraged to to validate, it allows for a smaller number of validators to join um, at a at a higher gain in those kind of early days. Um, there are some counter arguments uh, posted by Justin, I think primarily around the fact that Edgeware had very high lockups, uh, very high lockup amounts um, in the even with 12 months of un you know 12 months of lockup and things like that. Um, anyway, I'm generally in favor just because even if we hit this target too low and a lot of people show up to validate, that's fine. Uh, but this gives us some more wiggle room, and um, if validation is not super encouraged uh, because of that lockup time, it gives people a chance to earn a higher return for being an early adopter. Um, anyway, you can go check out the PR. Justin, you can present your counter arguments if you'd like, um, or we can just take the discussion there. But Greg, is there anything else that you want to discuss related to this? No, I was just curious to... Uh... Here, Mark, because I'll lock up more gorly ETH should we need to, should it not go through. The gorly whale. Yeah, cool. Uh, Justin? Yeah, I don't care too much either way. It was mostly just for discussion, as you said. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, Great. So I guess my, my brief on the lay of land for test nets, uh, I hit on the nose and there's no further discussion. Oh, and it turns out Ben Edgington is also a girly whale. <laughs> it's Adrian, Adrian's a whale. Wow. Okay, cool. Uh, we'll move on to the next item. Just general open discussion. Uh, any anything anyone wants to address? Okay, short and sweet meeting. Um, I know we're all pretty heads down trying to get stuff done. So I'll let y'all get back to it. Um, I believe we're planning on meeting in two weeks. I don't think that's U.S. Thanksgiving. So I think, I think we're going to miss that, which is good. Um, cool. Thanks, everyone. Talk to y'all soon. Thanks, Thank guys. Bye.